So I haven't been able to watch much of any of Raw, SmackDown over the past several weeks. So I was hoping, heading into Extreme Rules Sunday night, that you know what? I'll be a little refreshed. Maybe I'll have a slightly different perspective. And maybe I'll, maybe I'll, ah! <laughs> None of that crap happened. Different day, same old WWE garbage. Hashtag WWE ruins everything. I mean, seriously. What all can I say about this? Let, let's just let's just rapid fire through it. All right. You kick off with the B team winning the tag team championships. And we can celebrate like when Stretch Armstrong went to the moon. Stretch Armstrong went there, people. He went there. Curtis Axel dominating the mic like a third-generation superstar should. Because God knows he's not taking any time in the gym anymore. So he's got to be practicing somewhere, 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 right? It was surprising to me if only from this standpoint. It felt like just as the match was starting, it was over. And Bo should have pinned Bray. All I'm saying. But hey, it was a little cool mark on me because when all is said and done, it doesn't matter who the fucking tag team champions are. Give these guys their damn moment and keep it freaking moving. And speaking of keeping it moving, Finn Balor and Constable Corbin. I'm still confused as to exactly why the hell these two had a match on this car. I'm even more confused as to why New Day versus Sanity and their tables match was on the kickoff show. And this match between Finn Balor and Constable Corbin, two guys clearly looking to find their man, was on the main car. Michael Cole opined at one point in time that Constable Corbin can make anything possible. Well, anything that is except conquering male pattern baldness. The hell is that look? You look at Baron Corbin. Excuse me, excuse me. Constable, 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 Constable Corbin, as they kept trying to say over and over and over again. He looks like the freaking birth defect of a big boss man, Bull Buchanan orgy. That's what the fuck he looks like to me dressed like that. Just ridiculous. This whole thing was ridiculous. And wasn't it at this point in time where Jonathan Coachman was talking about how Corey Graves would know how it feels for Baron Corbin better than others. What the hell would Corey Graves know about that? He never wrestled on the main damn roster last time I checked. Michael Cole would know because last time I checked, he's 1-0 at WrestleMania, Coach. Keep it moving. Kurt Angle's ultimatum to Brock Lesnar. Ooh. We're going option A, B, C. What the fuck is this? This is when the WWE tries to get too cutesy and just goes into Stupidville. Kurt Angle says that Brock either needs to show up at Raw tomorrow night or make his intentions known of when his next title defense will be, or, 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 he will be stripped of the title. What the fuck is that? Like we've had other champions and demanded that they defend the title. We used to have the rule that we kind of abided by but then didn't, of the champ had to defend their belt every 30 freaking days. But now we have all these freaking options. No! You're supposed to be an authority figure. The most sensible thing is to say, either get your pasty ass here tomorrow night on Raw, or I'm taking the title, period. Bitch! End of it! That ultimatum was stupid. We'll see if they have Braun Cash in tomorrow night or something. Who the hell knows? Uh... Asuka and Carmella with Ellsworth in the freaking shark cage was the overbooked piece of garbage mess that you'd expect. And surely most of you hate it because Asuka fucking lost again. And it's like, I look at this and, you know, you fired James Ellsworth just to bring him right back and have him do the same crap all over again. So why did you ever get rid of him to begin with? You do all this stuff with Asuka and you build her up all this time just to have her lose, and then she loses, and then she loses some more. So what was the point? The bottom line I'm getting at is, what was the point of any of this? Which is a common theme throughout this show. What we also found out is Shinsuke still smashing grapes and apparently squashing Jeff Hardy. That came out of fucking nowhere. 
Usually you want baby faces to squash heels to really get it over. We went reverse. We go Shinsuke going in the, in the bottom corner to freaking Jeff Hardy, Bob's your uncle, right in the testicles. And then he squashes him with that Kinshaz or whatever the hell it's called. The real highlight of this, though, even though this was clearly Shinsuke's best match on the WWE main roster, let me emphasize and repeat, this was Shinsuke Nakamura's best match on the WWE main roster, and it's not close. Don't at me, eat shit. Because you know it's true. That's how bad this whole run's been. But the highlight comes when the Viper, Randy Orton, returns. And now we're finding out that he wants to join in on the nut smashing fun, and he's kicking Jeff Hardy in the testicles, too. He got a lot of people talking about, oh, Legend Killer Ryder for Randy Orton's back. Hugh Orton's the best. He's back. That's a freaking face turn to me. He kicked the dude in the nuts. To say, I can top you for kicking the dude in the nuts. And you know what? A feud built solely, solely on the fundamental premise of who can whack somebody in the nuts better feels like something we need in professional wrestling. How many times nut shots get millions and millions of views on social media and the interwebs? How in the fuck is that necessarily Orton making a heel turn? It doesn't mean it anything. It could be, probably is, but let's not overthink it too much. He wanted to send a message to Shinsuke, who was now the U.S. champion, and he kicked Jeff Hardy square in the nanas. Braun Strowman, Kevin Owens, Steel Cage. King of the Ring 1998, this was not. You can try and imitate, but you cannot duplicate. This chicken shit stuff with Kevin Owens is so stupid. I've talked about for years how ridiculous it is to have the cookie cutter chicken shit heel. And it really makes Kevin Owens look like an even bigger pussy than they were already portraying him. It's weak, it's dumb, it's stupid. And in theory, the way they did this, with Braun being the Money in the Bank winner, God, for, God forbid they actually want these guys to win matches before they actually cash in. This is a way, you would say in theory, that Braun still benefits by losing. Because the whole premise, even though you've spent weeks talking about Kevin Owens escaping, Kevin Owens escaping, so we don't want him to escape. So we put him in a steel cage match where he can win by escaping! Hashtag WWE fail logic. Braun tossing him off of the steel cage and into the freaking gimmick table. So Owens wins, but he really loses. And Braun loses, but he really wins. Blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Next. The whole thing with Team Hell No and the Bludgeon Brothers. The only thing that really matters to me, because this match was a farce. It really was is Kane should be rocking that walking boot on the campaign trail. Hashtag kayfabe isn't dead. Hashtag keep kayfabe alive. Hashtag campaign under kayfabe. Imagine him going out there on the campaign trail and talking about his libertarian principles all the while still selling the injury from Extreme Rules in the damn walking boot. Probably the most interesting thing Kane has done in a decade. Just say it. But the match was largely forgettable, let's just be honest. And the Bludgeon Brothers are still dumb. You get that Extreme Rules match, one of the few matches on this card that really had an Extreme Rules stipulation with Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's Championship. And I really don't remember much about this match, meaning it made no real impression or impact on me whatsoever. And of course Alexa wins. And of course, because it's an Extreme Rules match, where you've done this whole thing about Ronda Rousey bought a ticket. She's sitting front row. Extreme rules. She's there. She could get involved. Nia doesn't get disqualified. She could cost Alexa the title. So, of course, Ronda storms the ring only after Alexa has already won. Because, again, hashtag WWE fail logic. And it's all a fucking waste of time. Just like it was the whole premise of Nia winning the belt. Just so that way... Alexa could sit there and win the women's money in the bag, so that way she could immediately get it back. The company does whatever the hell they want to do, and you know that. Oh, and here's the thing. For all that bitching about Bobby Lashley and Roman Reigns possibly main eventing this show, not only did it not main event, it didn't even semi-main event. And to top it all off, Roman Reigns didn't even freaking win. So all that bitching, pissing, and moaning that so many people were doing was all for naught. And yes, while this match started off a little slow, it got better and much more interesting as it went along. 
And honestly, based off the way the show ended, maybe the damn thing should have went on last. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. For some sad news, though, I guess Rusev Day wasn't Championship Day today. Damn you, Ian in English! Damn you to hell! As the shirt says, you're killing me, Smalls! You're killing me! But I thought it was a decent performance by Rusev. Not exceptional, but it was solid. And again, they probably were told not to go out there and toot too much. I understand that because they weren't main eventing the show. The WWE Championship with a long reigning champion like AJ should be main eventing. So, of course, he's not because he's a champion on the blue brand. But it is what it is. What can you do? But, oh, Brother Mercy. Oh, Brother Mercy! What in the bluest of blue fox was that main event? You know what? I'll put it to you very simply. Ding dong, dumb dicks! That's what you get when you main event a pay-per-view with Dolph freaking Ziggler. You get a clusterfuck of a match that's overbooked all to hell where the crowd ends up being more interesting in counting down the clock. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one, and then they are with the actual damn match. A match that goes 30 damn minutes just so that way we get to the end of it, just so that way we can get some extra time. For then, just for the match to immediately end up being finished anyways, because Drew McIntyre, who interfered earlier on in the regulation time of the match and then got sent back to the back, Comes immediately back out and interferes and fucking the suspect sissy wins and retains his damn championship. So you did 30 plus minutes of this match, all this overbooked crap, just to have the same guy end up the champion at the end of the night. This is dumb. This is stupid. And this is what happens when you have a guy like the suspect sissy in a main event of a WWE pay-per-view in 2018. That's what the fuck you get. That's what the hell you deserve. <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler piece of crap. But when you look at this show, more can you say? It really was just another typical WWE show that epitomizes what this company is today in terms of their product. Most everything on this show lacked a lot of real meaning, purpose, and significance. It largely ended up being a waste of everybody's goddamn time for the three hours and 40 minutes that it ran. And you feel like you could have missed out and been just fine and probably found better things to do with your time on a Sunday night. If you're going to care more about your TV shows and less about your network events, that's fine. Then actually make your TV shows better and say screw it then on these special events on the network. But as long as you're going to have them, you're trying to build up to them, try to make them seem important. Then actually make them seem important, Vince! This thing sucked. The sad thing is I can't even go that ragingly bad and mad because you've had so many crap shows over the past few years. This one just kind of gets lost in the schmas of the diarrhea that you put out there. It doesn't even stand out as the king of the turds or anything like that at all. It was just another circle jerk and another waste of time. And it's no surprise why people like me and many, many others just like me or even not just like me just don't care as much anymore and just largely tune this product out because a stupid waste of time like Extreme Rules. You're free to tell me what you thought of this show in the comments section. Get your flaming keyboard fingers on fire ready, whatever, I don't care. But this show was lame. And almost four hours of my life that I wish I could, but ultimately never will, get back. That's it. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! Main event him in 2018. You get exactly what you deserve! Ding dong, dumb dicks. He sucks, always has, and always will. Hope you found out your lesson. The Pittsburgh crowd told you all you needed to know tonight. Seriously. But I am the Slight Daddy, and this is, of course, OTRS Central. It's not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Out of here.